Hello everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, we'll just wait for a few minutes um, to allow a few more people to join. Morning, Quentin. Good morning. Sorry, I'm late. I had a, some trouble connecting. It's all right. We'll just wait a couple more minutes. Maybe a few more people will join. Good to me. Hello. Hey guys. Hello, hello. It's Philip. Philip. We're just um we're just gonna wait one more minute and then we can start. All right, let's get going. Um, we can catch up people from the recording later on. Um, so uh, before we before we start on the first item uh, in, on the agenda, um, I wanted to, to share um, an idea that, uh, that uh, Luis and I had. Well, actually it was mostly Luis's idea, but um, I wanted to share an idea that, or, or a proposal even, um, about some of the format of the SIG calls going forward. So we wanted to we wanted to um, change around some of the topics. Um, today we have two meetings a month, um, and and often um, we've we've ended up having just a single meeting a month because project activity or, or project reviews um, have, been, have been slower than what's needed for two meetings. 
So what we what we were thinking was one way of revitalizing the SIG and, and making it more productive for the community is to have um, a session a month. Um, so maybe the, the, the first uh, the first uh, meeting every month could be focused on um, an information session. Um, we would we you know we would solicit the community to um, to select uh, topics or to propose topics, and maybe we could um, invite um, a number of people from the community to to actually present those topics. And those topics could be anything related to to cloud native storage, um, but obviously you know vendor independent as much as possible. Um, and the idea would be to 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 use it as a way of of um, creating content which um, which can be useful for the community, you know, in terms of the recordings that we create or or, or presentations, etc. Um, Luis, did I capture the the idea correctly, or do, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, just a a forum where it it allows a simple, very low ramp of somebody just come in and propose, you know, talk about technology, about about storage. And uh, it provides a soapbox forum for that. That way we can share that technology across uh, um, a large audience. What do you think about that, Quinton? Um, yeah, some of the other SIGs, uh, SIG runtime in particular is one that I've been involved in and has done this very successfully with, uh, you know, guest speakers essentially. And some of them are not uh, necessarily from the Kubernetes community um, or, or the CNCF community, but they they get guest speakers from outside uh, other other open source foundations, other projects that are not necessarily interested in being um, part of the CNCF, but just to come and talk about their their work, uh, and that's been very successful. I think the challenge is uh, is finding those speakers and finding people who, who are prepared to do that and who have interesting things to say. Um, otherwise, you can end up, you know, with lots of empty slots because you don't have the, the right people, or you can end up with with lots of not very interesting content. Um, neither of which are outcomes that I think we want. But but I think the concept is very sound. Okay, that sounds that sounds um, that sounds great. Um, so in that case, I will I'll ping an email out to the um, to the wider mailing list. Um, to sort of solicit um, maybe some options or, or, or some volunteers um, for the first few sessions, um, and maybe we can we can organise um, one of the sessions for for either January or, or the February meeting. Um, and of course, you know, if any of um, uh, if anybody on who's on the call um, has any ideas or or knows um, somebody who who might be interested in doing one of those presentations, of course, feel free to. Raise your hand now, um, or or later on, as need be. Um, so the the other agenda item we had um, we had today was uh, something that was proposed by uh, Raffaele, um, who is uh, who is on this call, um, and uh, he was interested in discussing aspects of um, disaster recovery. And how they relate to cloud native environments and cloud native storage, um, and potentially with um, uh, a proposal to to either create a working group to create some content around this, or or, or perhaps to to um, you know perhaps we could uh, we could also add um, sections on DR to you know existing existing um, the existing white paper, for example. So. Um, with that, I'll I'll hand it over to Raffaele to kind of um, set the stage. Yes, thank, thanks, Alex. No, I think you summarized it well. My uh, my question to this forum is: if you guys are interested in discussing DR and creating guidance uh, for storage, uh, you know, storage software and and stateful in general, also stateful middleware, since uh, I think there is a lot of, uh, you know, 
common concerns between storage and, and, and stateful middleware. So the idea would be to create the guidance <clears throat> on what we think is the right way to design these as the recovery strategies uh, in a container native world. So in a Kubernetes world, probably more, more, more specifically. <clears throat> and uh, I'm proposing this because of what I see with my customers, which, you know, I, I work for Red Hat, I am a consultant, uh, I'm an architect, but I work in consulting. I, I work with anything between three and five customers at any given time. So I don't have a big, you know, sample, but, but my sample is constantly varying. And I see always the same thing, which is people are trying to design disaster recovery. People are getting to the point where they don't onboard stateless applications only anymore. And we are getting to the point where there is interest for stateful. So there is interest for databases and message queue systems. Um, but they are designing, and of course the disaster recovery conversation comes up immediately once you have state, once you have a state to manage. But, but what people tend to do is to design disaster recovery strategy as you would design it for you know, the traditional uh, uh, traditional data centers or traditional IT with essentially active passive um, you know deployments and human decision to decide okay there is a disaster we have to flip the traffic we have to flip the whoever is the master and, and this kind of thing whereas I think uh, the, the technology now allows to do much more and allows to create autonomous systems which can detect disaster uh, and treat disaster essentially like an HA event, where you know uh, the the event is autonomously managed, traffic is 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 moved where where there is an active you know there is a working site, the stateful workloads reorganize themselves autonomously with zero intervention. So. I think with modern approaches to disaster recovery, you can achieve near to zero downtime and near to zero data loss, uh, but you have to do it right. And, and uh, a lot of people are not aware of the options. Um, there is not a lot of uh, knowledge about the CAP theorem, which, which is what, you know, essentially drives all of these conversations. And, uh, and there is not a lot of knowledge about the middleware that are designed around the CAP theorem versus middleware products that are of a previous generation and really cannot be used to build these kind of systems. So people does not, do not even make this, they are not capable of making this discussion, distinction that it's very difficult for them to I have this conversation and I, you know, I have, as you can see right there, when I went to school, when I went to the university, the CAP theorem was not, had not been discovered. We didn't learn these things there. So unless you, unless you actually proactively try to study these things, it's difficult to, to understand the big change that has happened in the meantime and the, and the new options. So I think if, if all of this information was to come from a community like this, you know, a committee like like this, like the SIG storage, uh, it would have more weight and it would help, you know, a, the wider community of practitioners or on OpenShift and, uh, well, Kubernetes and OpenShift, I'm interested in OpenShift, but in general, Kubernetes to, um, to do it right, to yeah. do it right. There's a, uh, um... Make sure that you're done. You yeah, done? I was just gonna add one of this. I was gonna add the, the what what in my experience are the difficult thing on about adopting. I, I'm finished with the objective, sure. but I, I'm obviously I'm pushing this in my in my day day by day work, and I can already share what is the what is hard about adopting this. There are two things that are hard, besides having the conversation in the right way with people, you know, you have to do a lot of education, but there are two things that are hard. One is you cannot build these architectures with two data centers. You need three data centers. 
and most of the customers have only two data centers. Um, you need three because of the leader election, um, you know, quorum issue. Mm -hmm. But um, so, so the, there needs to be guidance on how to build a third data center, possibly in the cloud. So, so that's a, probably one of the highest expression of hybrid cloud that we always hear about, right? Maybe you have two data centers on prem, and then the third is is on, on the cloud, and that's how you you do zero downtime DR. Mm -hmm. The other conversation that is hard is there is a lot of deploy, you know, existing deployments on old middleware that just doesn't cope with this kind of the new architecture. Well, and the migration is very hard. It's going to be very hard. So hmm. I don't know. Initially, I think we're going to have very little wins on your, on very critical, you know, pieces of you know applications, but. I think eventually that is the way to go. Okay. I'll stop here. So, yeah, no problem. I, this is my opinion. Um, so it sounds to me like you're asking uh, to describe uh, almost like a, a solution, right? Or a set of steps to create DR and how to set it up and how to do things like that. I, it's again, my, my opinion in, in the CNCF uh, six storage, I think if you took DR and described what it is and describe what it entails and describes the benefits of DR as a whole, right? That I feel fits the CNCF, uh, the storage landscape document better. Mm -hmm. The actual instruction of how to set up uh, DR and how to do things, that sounds more to me like a Kubernetes SIG storage thing. Or a or something that is part of the Kubernetes group, right? Uh, because th again, this is just my opinion. But the CNCF is a, it's separated from Kubernetes, right? Mm -hmm. so it's more about concepts and yeah. instruction, and more about. That. So uh, if you want to bring one of the things I've, I've been thinking about is creating a multi-cluster uh, definition or what it means to have multi-cluster, right? Uh, now that we have uh, a lot of multi-cluster Kubernetes uh, systems out there, like Anthos, Tanzu, uh, the mm -hmm. one from Amazon, Arc, and so on, they require DR, as for example. So if there was a multi-cluster paper that describes what the cluster means and what it means to have DR in that concept, then that's definitely, I feel, uh, something that we could use. Uh, but the actual steps to do it I feel that actual steps uh, or like use this tool to do this and or use this project to do that, that is more of a maybe a Kubernetes SIG yeah. project. Does that make well, sense? Okay. Th thank you for this. Uh, maybe I didn't use the right words. Uh, we, can, we can actually remove Kubernetes completely from the conversation because yeah. this is really an intrinsic property of stateful workloads. It doesn't have, it doesn't, all the consideration apply whether you deploy it in Kubernetes or, or in VMs, but all the configuration, all the considerations apply uh, with regard to the what I said, the quorum, the data centers, all of that. Perfect. Stuff. So, yeah, if we can keep it absolutely general if if, mm. if that is the preference, and uh, I'm totally fine with that. Um, yeah. well, this is just my opinion. What do you guys think? I think it's a fantastic topic. I think it's arguably the general topic because this is not actually specifically about disaster recovery it's it's more about handling handling failures uh, in in storage scenarios and disaster recovery is kind of one one flavor of failure i guess um i, I think this absolutely gets to the heart of cloud native storage uh, i mean there are other aspects as well like scalability but um but i think this is a great topic and i, and I think it's as you pointed out a, a very misunderstood topic um and uh, I think it'd be a fantastic topic of discussion. Uh, were you proposing to do that today or were you proposing to have a separate discussion or presentation or a working group or what, what was your thinking? Uh, that could be the first uh, uh, presentation, no? <laughs> well, yeah, it could. Yeah, I mean, first of all, today I was probing this team to see if there is interest. Um, if there is interest, I think we should decide what are we going to do about that, right? 
um, as as Alex mentioned in our you know private chat, we we discuss a little bit about this. I my, I envision a paper. It could be an extension of the current paper, or it could be a separate paper, but something like that. Because I don't think this lends itself to a video or, or something short. This this it's it's a complex it's a complex uh, topic, and uh, we need I think we need to have the right medium is to start with a document, in my opinion. Then we can simplify and we can extract, you know, maybe shorter and immediate messages but to begin with we should we I, I i would suggest a paper so maybe then if if we agree you know if we agree then maybe the next step is to create a, a working group to start drafting this paper i have i have already written a lot in this space uh so there are some things that we can probably reuse but my my articles are about doing these things in open shift so we can we can clear up all of that stuff and maybe reuse something on that uh, that I have already written, or we can start with original content. It's, it's for me, it's fine either way. I think using what you have as a starting point would be great. Uh, uh, maybe maybe reviewing that uh, one. Yeah, either either do a sort of a presentation to the group to just give them an overview of what you've already done. Uh, and then use that as context for starting the paper um, would be one approach. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very supportive of this, as you can probably hear. <laughs> Absolutely. I look forward to it. Yeah, I just just um, from a from a logistics point of view, what what we find um, works is if we can kind of. Um, split the content into into sections or 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 areas or or whatever that um that we want to focus on um and then you know that that kind of lends itself to to different people being able to contribute in on different parts of the of the document for example mm -hmm. um so so maybe maybe the first step would be if if you could put together even if it's even if it's just um bullet points um, in in a Google Doc or something like that to, to kind of say, look, I think the doc should cover these areas. Um, we can then have a discussion on the on the next call and go through um, sort of scope out what those what what each of those areas could contain um and and sort of allocate and, and and see if you know certain people want to want to take ownership of 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 some of those areas um and then that can, those those people can kind of split off and and form a small working group to mm -hmm. to to get going on that i mean i for one would 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 love to help with with some of that because it's it's um it's a it's a topic that's quite close to my heart as well, and I you know and I kind of agree with you. It's it's something that um, we come across more and more often as um, stateful workloads get split over multiple clusters, and you know the concept mm -hmm. of 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 HA now moves to to additional clusters. I think one of the one of the challenges one of the challenges that that will that will have to kind of um, understand is how much of this will be um, a storage topic and how much of this will be um, you know talking about multi-cluster and federation and, and, and perhaps other things like that which which um, you know we, we we might want to try and sandbox off some of those some of those other yeah. items and maybe even invite some some of the other sigs to to contribute to those areas. Yeah, I, well, uh, I, I was just gonna say a uh, quick thing. Um, I feel that um, maybe uh, six stories is a, probably a bad name for us. Maybe we should be called uh, SIG Appliance Persistence, so, <laughs> Application Persistence Group. Um, but uh, uh, I feel that he, there's two ways we could, I'm, I'm now kind of deep diving into it, so maybe we can put this off, but uh, we could do DR as a area of failure domain, like uh, Quinton mentioned, 
or we could create a whole new document that deals with multi-cluster because uh, and, and the persistence of data reliability across multi-cluster and DR being a piece of that, right? Uh, because uh, again, I, I just feel that we are in this point in the market where there's a lot of a uh, methods of how to do and expand your specifically Kubernetes, but your clusters across regions, right? And very easily. And how that deals with data movement, if one of those clusters die and you have to move to another, which is DR, right? Uh, and what that means to application data, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's something, if we attack multi-cluster and bring DR as part of it, I think it's something that it, it could be really big because that's multi-cluster is first what I think, anyway, it's just my opinion, but I think it's, it's something really, really nice. I like so, what you said before, Luis, that that we should focus on storage and uh, not assume that we are even running in a cluster because these are really is a is a topic of is an intrinsic property of stateful, whether it's stateful storage or stateful middleware. And so we can say instead of talking about multi cluster, we can say we can talk about a failure domain. And you know, so that could map to a data center or could map to a cluster. It doesn't matter at that point we are much more abstract around the underlying implementation. What matters is the behavior of this of the stateful middleware relative to the failure domains or what the failure domain does. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, so I would focus on that and then I would, and then we can have some pointers to work that other, maybe other six are doing on multi-cluster and say for, for this to work in a, Kubernetes multi-cluster environment, this is, these are the capabilities that we need, right? And I, in my documents, I have a good, uh, I think, um, identification of what these capabilities are, but we don't, we should not try to even define how, how those capabilities are implemented because there is an explosion of options right now and we, we just, we, we would get lost. So I think we, 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 we need to we need to protect we need to do a little bit of scope uh, management and, and stay I think in in in, uh, in the middle stateful middleware storage discussion only. I to totally agree. I, I would um, I would caution against us creating the wrong impression that we're somehow doing multi-cluster stuff because there is already a bunch of multi-cluster efforts and they're much broader than this. So, so what I do think we will need to do is, is definitely speak to the multi-cluster people. I know there's a SIG in, uh, uh, SIG in the Kubernetes world that I used to run for a long time, long ago. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's something uh, similar in the CNCF uh, SIG. Yeah, there, 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 there may be a group within an existing CNCF SIG. That we should be talking to just to make sure that we know what prior art there is we don't want to go writing a, a paper that somebody else has already written for example um so that would be one one uh, recommendation uh the other one is this term disaster recovery I, I i'm a bit of a stickler for names because sometimes they kind of stick and then they get uh they, they, they take on a life of their own i'm not sure that what you're proposing is actually what people understand by disaster recovery. I think disaster recovery, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you probably know a lot more than this about this than I do, but, but disaster recovery tends to be associated with the old school way of doing this stuff where you, you have a vendor who's like a disaster recovery vendor and they have you know warm standby data centers and, and all these kinds of things. Now that may just be because I'm too old and maybe that word doesn't mean the same thing anymore, <laughs> but I, I constantly, I mean, as you alluded to, come across this, people think disaster recovery means standby and means, you know, uh, two data centers and all this kind of stuff. And I think that's, if I understood you correctly, that's kind of precisely what we're not encouraging people to do. And so maybe we want to come up with a better name at the beginning than, you know, storage disaster recovery and, and have it as, um, you know, d durability or failure, failure handling and storage or something like that. that that's fine to know. Yeah. 
I, I have my definition of disaster recovery, but I don't know <laughs> if it's a shared definition or not. For me, it's what you do when you lose a data center, right? And so what you what you said, those are disaster recovery strategies, and those are, are those are the traditional ones, and they are the ones, and are, are, those are the kind of thinking that we need to change. But yeah. You, okay. you can still lose a data center today, so that event can still happen. But if we want to call it some something else, I'm fine. Yeah, totally fine. I, I'm hearing more and more this term now that is modern availability, which is <laughs> some somebody calls Very it fun. like that. Like <laughs> uh, so maybe that's that's what we could do. But I'm I'm okay to, with that. Uh, but what what we need to define is 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 to clearly explain the difference between HA and, and what I call disaster recovery. But the, the main, the, the difference and the, the way I invite my customer to think about this problem